You may have noticed underneath that shaping submenu inside the arrange menu when we were talking about welding that there's all sorts of other options inside that submenu. So in this exercise, we're going to take a look at two more options, one called trim and one called intersect. And I'll show you how these guys work here. So I would suggest that as you're working with these commands, assuming that you're brand new to these commands, is to use very simple shapes, ovals and rectangles rectangles and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I have two shapes created here on my page and once again sort of like the welding what I'll do is I'll overlap them in some manner maybe something like this right. Then what I'd like you to do is select your shapes of course that's always sort of the the first step select the objects that you want to manipulate head up to the arrange menu and then head all the way down to shaping and then there's our trim command that we'll look at here so go ahead and choose trim now as soon as you choose trim it doesn't look like it did anything does it well give this a try try pulling your shapes apart and sure enough it did do something what it did is it took the shape that was on on top, remember your stacking order, right? And used it almost like a cookie cutter to chop away or cut away from the shape that sat below it. Does that make sense? So all of a sudden, this opens the door to all kinds of different amazing possibilities. We can use this in all kinds of different situations. I will leave it up to your own imagination as to where you might apply this in your own work, but let me show you another quick example of where you might use this command. I'm just going to scroll down a little bit here. I've got two very simple objects, once again, just a circle and a square. What I'll do is I'll select them both just by clicking and dragging a bounding box around them. And let's do a little bit of aligning here first. So back up to the Arrange menu, down to Align and Distribute, and I'll choose Align Centers Horizontally. And then I'll head back to Arrange, back down to Align and Distribute, and I'll choose Align Centers Vertically. So now I have both objects sitting on top of one another, right? Something like this. And what I want to do, essentially, is I want to use the circle to knock a hole in the square in the background, right? That's really what I'm after. So once again, I'll select everything just like this. I use that click and drag, usually, to select all my objects. Back up to the Arrange menu down to shaping and then of course trim. Now once again at first it doesn't look like it did anything but try moving your topmost shape away and you'll notice sure enough there's actually a hole now in my square. Now let me ask you this, how do I know for sure that there's a hole in my square? Is that just a white circle or is it actually a hole? Well, give this a try. I'm going to select my square here and I'll change my stacking order. I'll head up to arrange and then down to order and then I'll choose to front of page to bring him all the way to the front of the stacking order and sure enough, that's a hole inside my square. Okay, wonderful. So there's your there's your trim command. Let's take a look now at the intersect command. I'm just going to scroll down here. I've got more shapes set up for us. Once again, just a set of simple shapes to sort of show you how this command is going to work. And once again, just sort of stack them on top of each other, maybe something like this. Go ahead and select them. Head up to your arrange menu, all the way down to shaping, and then this time choose intersect. Okay, now, once again, it doesn't look like it did anything, right? Until you start pulling your shapes apart. Let's move the rectangle, let's move the circle, and now I'm left with this little piece here. Now, where did that piece come from? Well, this little piece was the area of the circle and the square that were overlapping. Do you want to see that one more time? Okay, I'm just going to use my Control z a bunch of times here just to undo. Okay, so this overlapping space here between the two objects or where the two objects touch or overlap one another, that area is going to become a new shape here inside CorelDRAW. So select everything, arrange, shaping, and then intersect. All right, wonderful. Pull everything apart. And that's what we're left with. So you might be sitting there going, well, that's interesting, but where the heck am I going to use it? Well, you can actually use this command in all kinds of different applications to create, once again, new shapes, new objects, new items, new symbols, and so on for your designs. So check this out. I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. I have yet another set of shapes ready to go here. 
And here's what I'll do. I'm going to overlap my polygon over top of my rectangle, maybe something like this, right? There we go. And I'm not even really being too careful here. I'm just going to select everything here and then head up to Arrange, down to Shaping, and then down to, of course, Intersect. Okay, let's start pulling the pieces apart. And there, that's the shape that I'm left with. So maybe this shape here is something I'm going to use in a logo or a design or who the heck knows. So in other words, these commands that I'm showing you are very cool for creating even more shapes and objects here inside Corel. To change up.